Hey, great to have you back. Now it's time to get down to business. We're gonna start talking about practical ways businesses are using data and the opportunities that it can create for you. So far, you've learned a lot of practical data analysis skills. With these next couple of videos, we're gonna switch gears a little and talk about why you're learning these skills. Hopefully this will give you more perspective into what kinds of opportunities are out there for you. Coming up, we're gonna talk more about the kinds of roles data analysts play in different industries, the tasks that these roles require, and the importance of fairness and avoiding bias in analyzing data for business tasks. We'll also talk about opportunities you can tap into and how this program factors into your future success in the data analyst role. So with all that in mind, let's get started. Previously, we learned about what a data analyst does and why that work is so valuable. Now, let's look at where data analysts actually do their work. You'll learn much more about the industries you could work in as a data analyst and how companies in these fields are already using data analytics to do some really cool things. There are so many businesses out there that have a big need for the skills you're learning right now. Across industries like technology, marketing, finance, healthcare, and so many more, real companies are already using data analytics to stay ahead of the curve. And the more they use data in their business, the more they understand just how important data analysts like you are to their success. Let's look at a real life example of a brand you'll probably recognize, Coca-Cola. Data is changing the way Coca-Cola approaches its marketing strategies. Coca-Cola uses data gathered from consumer feedback to create advertising that speaks directly to different audiences with different interests. How does this work? You know those high-tech Coca-Cola vending machines you see at movie theaters sometimes? It's always fun getting to make your own flavors. Well, those machines have built-in artificial intelligence and data analysis tools. This helps Coca-Cola see all the different kinds of flavor combinations people are coming up with, which they can then use as inspiration for new products. How cool is that? Ever wonder how Google gives you the right answer to any question in just seconds? That's powered by data too. We use all kinds of data to determine a website's reliability and accuracy to make sure you get the most useful results for any search you make. But it isn't just big companies like Coca-Cola and Google that use data. Small businesses everywhere are also starting to take advantage of data-driven insights to improve their operations and make better decisions. Small businesses can use data to do all kinds of things. They might use data analytics to better understand their customers' buying habits, create more effective social media messaging, or, in the case of one city zoo and aquarium, predict the number of daily visitors based on local climate data. City Zoo and Aquarium realized that on rainy days, they were seeing huge drop-offs in attendance, but they had no way to accurately predict when those rainy days would hit. This made staffing a real challenge. Some days they found themselves overstaffed, other days they were unprepared for the rush of visitors. To deal with this, data analysts took years of weather records from the zoo and used that data to accurately predict future weather patterns. This made it easy for the zoo to know how much staff they needed when. Because the zoo could predict and manage their staffing needs more accurately, they were able to provide a better experience for visitors and dedicate more resources to creating a better experience for the animals too. We see a similar thing in the healthcare industry. There, data analysts look at clinic attendance data to help hospitals and doctor's offices predict when rush hours will hit so they can be ready for it. Your local city hospital is a great example. Let's say they've been getting complaints about long wait times, sometimes an hour or more, which made it hard for some patients to get the care they needed. So data analysts use data about the hospital's daily foot traffic to help them make more informed decisions about how many doctors they need on staff at any given time. This helped reduce wait times, improve their patient's experience, and make better use of the healthcare worker's time too. Like I said, there are many ways that companies in different industries put data to use, but they can only do that if they have data analysts they can rely on. So you might be wondering how you fit into the equation. Well, you've got plenty of options, but you don't have to decide what industry you want to work in right away. There will be plenty of time to think about that as you make your way through this program. 
By the time you finish this program, you'll have the core skills that will make you valuable in any industry that makes data-driven decisions, which, as it turns out, is most industries, even zoos. Coming up, we'll check out the business task where data can be helpful, and we'll explore even more how data analysts are empowering businesses through data. I'll see you then. Hi, I'm Joey, and I work as an analytics program manager within RUSE. Now, RUSE stands for Real Estate and Workplace Services, and my job is to bring data and analytics into the decision making here, especially with regards to creating a safe and fun work environment. My journey into analytics was a bit different in that I had no plan or really didn't see myself being where I am now. Now, luckily, I started in a rotational program called the HRA program within people operations, which afforded me the ability to play three different roles, essentially. I was uh, in a generalist capacity, in a specialist uh, role, and as an analyst. And I really found a love and a passion in the analytical work. I started on the business intelligence team whose job was to provide SQL-based reporting back to the business. I realized that analytics is the right career path for me when I found myself enjoying coming to work and getting my work done. And I think I can connect that to two passions of mine. The first is problem solving. I love taking a complex problem, a mystery, a riddle, and being able to find the answers and come up with the solution. And then the second thing is being able to work with people and help people. In analytics, I feel like the key to success is being able to blend the personal side with the technical side. At the beginning of my career, I focused a little more on the technical pieces, and I wanted to make sure I, I had the right technical knowledge to be able to answer questions. But what I found is over time, I needed to grow that other side just as much. And I think that my career has allowed me those opportunities to kind of work each of those muscles, the human interaction part and the technical part to make sure that they're both growing uh, at the end of the day. For any analyst, for any person that's honestly at the early stages of their career, understanding data, respecting data, knowing how to work with data is incredibly important because you know, my vision is that every role in some form or fashion will involve data and its use in learning how to extract insights from it will be at the core of any critical role across any company organization. Generally, in those first two years, you're developing the core skill sets that make you a fantastic generalist. And then in the next two to five years, you're learning about something very specific as it, as it relates to your job. So whether it's the area that you're supporting or maybe a very technical component, like let's say you wanna become a SQL expert so that you can manipulate large data sets for financial analysis purposes. Similarly, even if you come into finance as a data analyst, you can pop out of finance and go into what a lot of people like to call the business, which is typically your operations functions and become a business analyst or a data analyst. There's so many different paths that you can take from the starting point that you really can't predict you're in. I'm just deeply passionate about working with and supporting young people and really giving them a jump start to their career. Um, this stems from honestly my own personal experience where in the first two years of my career, I had essentially zero support from my manager and my direct management chain. Having gone through that experience in my first two years, I realized and I felt, experienced how that can slow you down. And especially when you're somebody that has a lot of potential and a lot of ability, you want to be, a, be in an environment that fosters that ability and really wants to see you grow. I think it's incredibly important to have programs like these that take away all the barriers, that remove any of the constructs that prevent people from being able to find out what they need um, to be in an industry like this to be successful in a role like a data analyst so that they themselves can dream about where they can go in their career. My name is Tony. I'm a finance program manager at Google. As a data analyst, you'll be tackling business tasks that help companies use data. Coming up, we'll talk more about what a business task actually is 
and some examples of what they might look like in real data analyst jobs. Let's take a second to think back on the real examples of businesses using data analytics in their operation we've seen before. You might have noticed a common theme across every example. They all have issues to explore, questions to answer, or problems to solve. It's easy for these things to get mixed up, so here's a way to keep them straight when we talk about them in data analytics. An issue is a topic or subject to investigate. A question is designed to discover information. And a problem is an obstacle or complication that needs to be worked out. Coca-Cola had a question about new products. Data analysis gave them insights into new flavors customers already like. The city zoo and aquarium had a problem with staffing. Data helped them figure out the best staffing strategy. These questions and problems become the foundation for all kinds of business tasks that you'll help solve as a data analyst. A business task is the question or problem data analysis answers for a business. This is where you'll focus a lot of your efforts in the work you'll do for future employers. Let's stick with our zoo example and see if we can imagine what a business task for a zoo might look like. We know the problem. Unpredictable weather was making it hard for the zoo to anticipate staffing needs. So maybe the business task could be something like analyze weather data from the last decade to identify predictable patterns. The data analyst could then plan out the best way to gather, analyze, and present the data needed to solve this task and meet the zoo's goals. Then, using data, the zoo would be able to make informed decisions about their daily staffing. So we talked a little about data-driven decision-making in previous videos. But just in case you need a refresher, here it is. Data-driven decision-making is when facts that have been discovered through data analysis are used to guide business strategy. The simplest way to think about decision-making is that it's a choice between consequences, good, bad, or a combination of both. In our zoo example, the zoo had the data they needed to make an informed decision that solved their problem. But what if they had made this decision without data? Let's say they just relied on observation and memory to track the weather and make staffing schedules. Well, we already know that wouldn't have solved their problem long term. Data analytics gave them the information they needed to find the best possible solution to their problem. That's the power of data. Observation and intuition are powerful tools in decision making, but they can only take us so far. When we make decisions based on just observation and gut feelings, we're only seeing part of the picture. Data helps us see the whole thing. With data, we have a complete picture of the problem and its causes which lets us find new and surprising solutions we never would have been able to see before. Data analytics helps businesses make better decisions, and it all starts with a business task and the question it's trying to answer. With the skills you'll learn throughout this program, you'll be able to ask the right questions, plan out the best way to gather and analyze data, and then present it visually to arm your team so they can make an informed, data-driven decision. And that makes you critical to the success of any business you work for. Data is a powerful tool. And with great power comes, well, you know the rest. And you're doing a super job taking in all of this information. Up next, we'll talk about your responsibility as a data analyst to make sure you're gathering, analyzing, and presenting data in a way that's fair to the people being represented by that data. My name is Rachel, and I'm the business systems and analytics lead at Verily. There are a lot of different types of problems that a data analyst can solve. I've been lucky enough over my career to have, to have seen a lot of them and to take in a lot of very different types of data and help turn that into meaningful answers. I think one of the most important things to remember about data analytics is that data is data. I'm a finance data analyst. And so my role at Verily is to take all of our financial information, all of the information of the money we're spending and the money we're making, and turn that into reports and insights so that our business leads can understand what we're doing. One of the most important things I've done at Verily recently was help create what's called a profit and loss statement for each of our business units. And that means that in real time, our teams can see what their budget is and how they're spending against that budget. 
And what that does is that helps our teams keep to that budget by either increasing their revenue streams so that they have more money to play with or pulling back their spending so that they can keep themselves within that budget. And all of that really helps keep us on track as a company and making sure that we're hitting our goals. I found that data acts like a living and breathing thing. When you have a ton of data points, it can be overwhelming when you first sit down to make sense of it. You have tons of columns, tons of records, tons of different types of data, and finding a way to make sense of that is really hard. And that's where the expertise of a data analyst comes in. It has been some of the most frustrating moments of my career, but also some of the most rewarding work I've ever done when it finally comes together. The best advice I have for any data analyst starting out is keep at it. If the angle you're taking doesn't work, try to find another one. Try to come at it in a different way. Try to ask a different question. Eventually, the data will yield, and you'll get the insights you're looking for. So far, we've covered the different roles data analysts play in business environments and the kinds of tasks that come with those roles. But data analysts have another important responsibility making sure that their analysis are fair. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Data is based on collected facts. How can it be unfair? Well, that's a good question. So let's learn what fairness means when we talk about data analysis and why it's important for you as an analyst to keep in mind. Fairness means ensuring that your analysis doesn't create or reinforce bias. In other words, as a data analyst, you want to help create systems that are fair and inclusive to everyone. Sound simple enough? Well, here's the tough part about fairness in data analytics. There isn't one standard definition of it. But hopefully, the way we've just described it can give you one way to think about fairness for right now. But it's about to get a bit trickier. Sometimes, conclusions based on data can be true and unfair. What can you do then? Well, let's find out with an example. Let's say we have a company that's notorious for being kind of a boys club. There isn't much representation of other genders. This company wants to see which employees are doing well. So they start gathering data on employee performance and their own company culture. The data shows that men are the only people succeeding at this company. Their conclusion? That they should hire more men. After all, they're doing really well here, right? But that's not a fair conclusion for a couple of reasons. First, it doesn't even consider all of the available data on company culture, so it paints an incomplete picture. Second, it doesn't think about the other surrounding factors that impact the data. Or in other words, the conclusion doesn't consider the difficulties that people of different gender identities have trying to navigate a toxic work environment. If the company only looks at this conclusion, they won't acknowledge and address how harmful their culture is, and they won't understand why certain people are set up to fail within it. That's why it's important to keep fairness in mind when analyzing data. The conclusion that only men are succeeding at this company is true, but it ignores other systematic factors that are contributing to this problem. But don't worry, there's a way to make a fair conclusion here. An ethical data analyst could look at the data gathered and conclude that the company culture is preventing some employees from succeeding, and the company needs to address those problems to boost performance. See how this conclusion paints a much more complete and fair picture. It recognizes the fact that some people aren't doing as well in this company and factors in why that could be, instead of discriminating against a huge number of applicants in the future. As a data analyst, it's your responsibility to make sure your analysis is fair and factors in the complicated social context that could create bias in your conclusions. It's important to think about fairness from the moment you start collecting data for a business task to the time you present your conclusions to your stakeholders. We'll learn more about bias in the data analysis process later on in another course. For now, let's check out an example of a data analysis that does a good job of considering fairness in its conclusion. 
A team of Harvard data scientists were developing a mobile platform to track patients at risk of cardiovascular disease in an area of the United States called the Stroke Belt. It's important to call out that there were a variety of reasons people living in this area might be more at risk. With that in mind, these data scientists recognized that fairness needed to be a priority for this project, so they built fairness into their models. The team took several fairness measures to make sure they were being as fair as possible when examining sensitive and potentially biased data. First, they teamed analysts with social scientists who could provide insights on human bias and the social context that created them. They also collected self-reported data in a separate system to avoid the potential for racial bias, which might skew the results of their study and unfairly represent patients. And to make sure their sample population was representative, they oversampled non-dominant groups to ensure their model was including them. It's clear that the team made fairness a top priority every step of the way. This helped them collect data and create conclusions that didn't negatively impact the communities they were studying. Hopefully these examples have given you a better idea of what fairness means in data analysis. But we're going to keep building on our understanding of fairness throughout this program. And you'll get to practice with some activities. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm a research scientist at Google. My team is called the Ethical AI Team. And we're a group of folks that really are concerned not only about how AI and the technology operates, but how it interacts with society and how it might uh, help or harm marginalized communities. So when we talk about data ethics, we think about, you know, what is the good and right way of using data? What are going to be ways that are going to be uses of data that are going to be beneficial to people? When it comes to data ethics, it's not just about minimizing harm, but it's actually this, this concept of beneficence. How do we actually improve the lives of people by using data? When we think about data ethics, we're thinking about who's collecting the data, why are they collecting it, how are they collecting it, and what for what purpose. Because of the way that organizations have imperatives to make money or to report to somebody or provide some kind of analysis, we also have to keep strongly in mind how this is actually going to benefit people at the end of the day. Are the people represented in this data going to be benefited by this? And I think that's the thing you never want to lose sight of as a data scientist or a data analyst. I think aspiring data analysts need to keep in mind that a lot of the data that you're going to encounter is data that comes from people. So at the end of the day, data are people. And you want to have a responsibility to those people that are represented in those data. Second is thinking about how to keep aspects of their data protected and private. We don't want to go through our practice thinking about data instances as something we could just throw on the web. No, there needs to be considerations about how to keep that information and likenesses like their images or their voices or their, or their text. How do we keep that private? We also need to think about how um, we can have mechanisms of giving users and giving consumers more control over their data. It's not going to be sufficient just to say, we collect all this data and trust us uh, with all these data, but we need to ensure that there's actionable ways in which people can consent to giving those data and ways that they can ask for it to be revoked or removed. Um, so data is growing, and at the same time, we need to empower people to have control over their own data. The future is that data is always growing. We haven't seen any kind of evidence that data is actually shrinking. And with the knowledge that data is growing, these issues become more and more peaked and more and more important to think about. By now, we know that there are all kinds of jobs in different industries available for data analysts. But now, it's time to think about something just as important. How can you tell if a job is a good fit for you and your career goals. Tough one, right? Don't worry, 
That's exactly what we'll cover in this video. There's a lot of important factors to think about when searching for your dream job. Let's talk about some of the most common factors first. Industry, tools, location, travel, and culture. Data is already being used by countless industries in all kinds of different ways. Tech, marketing, finance, healthcare, the list goes on. But one thing that's important to keep in mind, every industry has specific data needs that have to be addressed differently by their data analysts. The same revenue data can be used in three different ways by data analysts in three different industries, financial services, telecom, and tech. For example, a finance analyst at a bank pulls public revenue data of telecom company X to create a forecast that predicts where revenues will be in the future to recommend a stock price. The business analyst at telecom company X uses that same data to advise the sales team. Then a data analyst at the company who created a customer management tool for telecom company X will use that revenue data to determine how efficiently their software is performing. Finance, telecom, and tech all use data differently, so they need analysts who have different skills. It all comes down to what the needs of the industry are. Those needs will determine what kind of task you'll be given, the questions you'll be answering, and even how you'll approach job searching. If you're just starting out, a great way to guide your search is to think first about what you're interested in. Does helping people get healthier sound meaningful to you? Maybe you want to focus on using data to improve hospital admissions. What about helping people save for a happy retirement? You might want a job that uses data to determine risk factors in financial investments. Or maybe you're interested in helping journalism grow in your city. A job using data to help find your local news website, find more subscribers, could be the perfect role for you. The key is to think about your interest early in your job search. That'll lead you in the right direction, and it'll help you in interviews too. Potential employers will want to know why you're interested in their company and how you can address their needs. So if you can speak about your motivation to work in data analytics during interviews, you'll make yourself stand out in a great way. You'll have options when it comes to where you work and who you work for. But remember, you want to enjoy what you do. So it's a good idea to think about how you want to use your skills. Then search for jobs that allow you to do that. Next on the list of things to think about, location and travel. When you start your job search, you need to make some decisions about where you want to live. So it helps to ask yourself some questions. Does your preferred industry have opportunities in your area? Are you trying to stay local or would you be happy relocating? How long are you willing to commute to work every day? Will you drive to work, walk, take public transport? Is that possible year round? How do you feel about working remotely? Does working from home excite you or bore you? And of course, you'll want to consider cost of living and whether or not you want the convenience of city living or a quiet suburban home. And it's not just about where you'll be based. Some jobs may ask you to travel, which could be an exciting chance to see the world or a deal breaker. It's all about what you want out of this job. So start asking yourself some of these questions. Figuring out the answers can help you narrow down your search even further so you're only looking at jobs you'd actually accept. Once you've answered enough questions, you'll be able to identify some specific companies that fit your needs. At this point, it's a good time to think about your values and what kind of company culture is a good fit for you. Ready? Here come some more questions. Do you work best in a team or by yourself? Do you like to have a set routine or do you enjoy taking a new project and trying new things? Do your values match the company's values? You'll want to pay attention to these things during your job search and interview process so you can be sure you fully invested in the company you work for. That's the best way to start building an exciting and fulfilling career. This program will help you learn the core skills for data analytics in any setting. It's up to you where you want to take them. Whether that means starting in a completely new industry or moving into an analyst position in an industry you already have experience in. And hopefully what we've covered here has helped you get on track for your future job search. After this, 
you'll have a few activities to do, and then you'll be able to move on to the next part of this course. We learned a lot so far, like what kinds of opportunities are out there for data analysts in different industries, how data analysts help businesses make better decisions, the importance of fairness in data analytics, and the potential questions you can start asking yourself before your future job search. And you can always look back at these lessons if you want to review. In an upcoming course, we'll look at the skills all successful data analysts have, and you'll learn how you can start practicing them too. But before that, you'll have an assessment. Good luck, and I'll see you later. My name is Sama Moid, and I'm a recruiter here at Google for the large customer sales team. Basically, I hire talent for the sales team here. Even within the sales recruiting space, I recruit specifically for the analytical lead uh, roles here at Google. I want the candidate to be as comfortable as possible. Um, as a recruiter, I'm also their advocate. Um, if they're a good fit for the team, I'd like to present them in the best light. As a recruiter, some advice I would give for a data analyst that's just starting to look for a job. Think about a time where you've used data to solve a problem, whether it's in your professional or personal projects. Another tip I would say for a data analyst that's just looking for a new, a new job is to increase your professional network. There are many ways to increase your professional network. One of them is to increase your online footprint, reach out to other analysts on LinkedIn, um, join local meetups with other data scientists. Sometimes when we're looking for a really uh, a unique skill set, recruiters are going on websites like LinkedIn and GitHub and trying to find that talent themselves. It's really important to have your LinkedIn updated along with websites like GitHub where you can showcase a lot of the data analyst projects you've done. Another tip I would say for an in-person interview is to prepare questions for the interviewer. Make sure they're not broad questions. They should be questions that will help you understand the team and, and the job better. If you're given a case study in an interview, you should expect to be given a business problem along with a sample data set. Then you'd be asked to take that sample data set, analyze it, and come up with a solution. One of the things you can do to help prepare yourself for this is to ensure you are analyzing the data and coming up with a solution that relates back to that data. Sometimes there is no right answer, and a lot of times interviewers are looking to see your thought process and the way you get to your solution. I highly encourage that if you find a role that you're interested in, not only apply to it, but go the next step. Look for the recruiter, look for the hiring manager online, see if you can reach out to them and set up a coffee chat or send them your resume directly. Online applications could be a really big black hole where you never hear back from the recruiter or the team. When you reach out directly to a hiring manager or recruiter, it really shows your eagerness uh, for the role and your interest for the role. Even if sometimes you don't get a response from that, from reaching out, you never know. It's, you know, you try multiple different times and that one time you get a response back from a recruiter or hiring manager could be the time you get the job that you really wanted. We're at the end of this course, which means it's time to show off what you've learned. We've covered the different kinds of industries using data to drive decisions and how you can help them. How to promote fairness in your data work, and opportunities that are out there in the world of data analytics. I know you've got this. And once you finish the course challenge, I'll be right here to introduce you to the next course. Congratulations on finishing this first course. You've already learned a lot, and you're ready to take what you've learned and move forward. And if you ever need a refresher, just remember that these videos will still be here whenever you need them. You might remember your next instructor from her introduction at the beginning of the intro course. Get ready to meet my fellow Googler and your instructor for the next course, Jimena. She's ready to help you get started on your next step towards finishing this program and becoming a data analyst. This next course will build directly on some of the topics that you've learned so far and give you insight into the things we've already talked about. Like any good detective, you learn how to ask the right questions and use data to find answers. Employees in every industry need to become comfortable asking questions, but this can especially be true for data analysts. A lot of data analysts try to make their work perfect the first time, even though they might not have all the information. Instead of asking questions, they make assumptions. That can lead to mistakes. It's so much better to be humble and inquisitive, 
and to ask questions. I'll show you what I mean. One of the analysts I supervised came into Google with no coding experience. He was nervous about leaving a great first impression, so he tried to study up on multiple languages by himself before he started. When the work actually began, he didn't ask us, his team, questions, or ask us for help when he ran into roadblocks. There are a lot of great places to find answers, especially online, and his initiative helped him find some of those places. But at the end of the day, he forgot to tap into his best resource, us, his team. Because he was nervous about how he would be perceived if he asked us for help, he almost missed out on some great insights from his team members. As Roblox persisted, he realized he needed to make a change. He stopped trying to guess expectations, processes, and more all on his own and started asking us more questions. As soon as he embraced this new approach, he skyrocketed on our team. His learning went straight up the curve like a hockey stick. His impact on the organization, the number of people who reach out to him, and his career path going forward all did the same. The bottom line is, you don't need to know it all. The saying is true. There are no bad questions. Being open to learning is one of the most important qualities for a data analyst. Speaking of learning, in the next course, we'll go into more depth learning about basic spreadsheet skills and when you'll need to use them. You'll discover how to apply structured thinking to data work, and you'll focus on how to best meet stakeholder needs and expectations by gathering all the clues. Great work, and good luck on the next course.